What up, y'all? So we're going to try this again. Um, got the Nasaja Wave interview. Boom. Going to kick off the interview. Budgerek, what up, bro? Man, just about to get down on this interview with Nostalgia Wave. Um, Robbie, what up? How you doing? What's up, y'all? Trying to get uh, Nostalgia Wave got a podcast ahead of us. Right? Isn't that crazy? I had to do a different scenery. Trying to switch it up every now and then. Um, even though... It's is it technically is it so far as a winter? It's not too cold out here. Um, but yeah. Hey man, sorry about that. <laughs> hey, no worries, brother. Welcome back. Um welcome back to Up Here Radio. So we're gonna kick off this podcast, the first interview with you. Um I was telling the viewers in the first the first live that you were the first one to kick off the the music segment as a music producer last Friday. Um, talk about that experience. How did you feel doing that? It was fun, man. It was it was something different. You know, I don't really do too many uh, live performances. I'm looking forward to doing more. It's like for, as far as like festivals and uh, you know just lives, but it, it was pretty cool, man. Like I mean, I go live on Twitch sometimes, but I only get like one viewer. You know what I mean? So it was it was different. It was fun though. I definitely gotta give you a follow on Twitch. That's dope. Um I looked back at the at the live and I'm like, damn, this music is sorry y'all, the neighbor dog's going crazy. It's cool, uh, the music was really good. When I watched it again, I was like, Doggies, I'm trying to do a podcast. <laughs> um but, dog, I'm gonna have to relocate. But uh, what I was saying is you definitely have the music for a festival because I was moving, bro. I was moving. Now, let me ask you this. Was that your first live performance? Oh, uh, nah. As far as, like, playing... Nah, nah. I played I played in front of people before, like, a um, couple people, probably, like, two or three of my friends, shit like that, but, you know. So, nah. Yo, it was a really good time. Now, talk about, for everyone that's new to you, Zoned Out Melodic, a.k.a. Nostalgia Wave, how'd you come up with your name? Uh, zoned out melodic. It's a funny story. I was actually I was high as shit with my friend. He was just chilling, and I was like, "How does my music make you feel?" And he was like, "Zoned out." And I was like, "Zoned out melodic." And he was, and he was like, "Oh yeah." And I was like, "That could be my producer name." And we just started laughing on some hot shit. Um, and it was cool, and I was like, "Yeah." And nostalgia wave came from um the genre that I'm trying to create. I just you know just a vibe. It's just a, a feeling. So that's where that came from. Um, I know that we had a discussion. Um, I think it was private, but we were talking about how your genre nostalgia wave, and you're trying to bring back that feel. Mm -hmm. Talk about a little bit about more on that topic. Uh, the feeling I'm trying to bring back at the moment is like more of a 2000s Y2K type of type of type of style. Maybe because I'm I was born in 2001, so that's like the um, the vibe that I kind of know. You know what I mean? It's kind of it's. I don't know. It's just it's just cool. Like listening to the songs back then, it kind of gives me like nostalgia. You know what I mean? It's it's cool. You know, it's 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 true, dog. Like for some reason, I mean, I haven't really tapped into it yet. Like the music back then, it held. Like it's still timeless. Yeah, where yeah. now, where a lot of the music now is so freaking repetitive that the music just goes out the door. You know what it is? It's like nowadays, it's so easy to get known and get attention that people just go for that. You know, especially like rappers and you know. It's so easy to get attention that people just kind of go with us cool, let's you know, try to get their name out there, and then they kind of blow up for like a week and then disappear type shit. So, damn dog. What what are some what are some ways that you're making sure that your music sticks? I'm building a community first of all. Like I'm finding people who like nostalgia. I'm finding people who like my uh, aesthetic. My, I'm finding like you know I'm going to like the um, communities that I like, like emo, cybercore. In the alternative rock, shit like that. I, I'm going to those communities and kind of just you know, making edits for them, so they can kind of get it, get to know my skill as a producer and as an editor. I get to know them, and then boom, community built, just like that. And you know, I'm not trying to just blow up fast. You know, I'm trying to get 
known underground, mainstream, like all over. Fuck all that, everything. You know what I mean? For real, for real. And you know what? Like you're right. As long as you pace yourself, bro, you eventually will build that community because that's most important. You don't want to be one of those musicians that blow up and the fan base is not there. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't want people like I don't want this. I mean, I want everybody to listen to my music, but I don't want just like people who don't get it to listen to my music. And then like they just have me in their playlist, but they never listen to me type shit. You know what I mean? So yeah. I want people yeah. who actually get it to to get it. So. Um, you brought up how you were born in 2001 and a lot of the music you listened to was during that time. Go ahead and name some of the inspirations. Um, mainly like just 2000s emo. Now I, I don't know like a lot of bands and stuff, but like I remember being a kid and just like hearing it like on TV and shit, and just kind of like being like oh, that sound is so cool. I don't know what it is about emo. It's just so fucking like so raw. I don't know something. It's cool though, but emo, a lot of R and B, obviously. You know, being black, just all they play, um, rap. You know, DMX. Um, you know, for real. Uh, what's I can't think of any artists at the moment, but I I try to I try to uh tell you some to come to Yo, those are all great, and it's cool that you brought up R and B because yeah, dog, back in the two thousands, even in the nineties, the R and B was beautiful, oh, bro. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, sure. Name some of the if you can name some of the artists or the bands that you were listening to that did R and B. Uh, you know, like Beyonce, shit, fucking. Like I said, man, the, the way that I listen to music is more of a, of a feeling thing. I don't kind of like listen to particular artists and shit. I just kind of listen to what I like. You know, my playlist is crazy. But um, I feel that. I feel that. What about what are your um, thoughts on R&B now? It's cool. Uh, another another person I listen to was New Edition. They're oh, band. yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, new yeah. edition, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. new edition. That's you know, I, I know the classics. You know, I know the classics, man. It just can't. It ain't coming to me right now. But um, R&B now. I would say it's it's just like like every other genre now. It's kind of mix, mixing into like this trap type of type of um, type of road. It's just I don't know. Yeah, I don't really listen to R and B nowadays, to be honest. What are your thoughts behind like the the power of hip hop? Like hip hop has touched yeah. every avenue, every corner in the world. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's very influential, and I think it's very important to black culture and to American culture. Um, I think it will continue to be like the main, the main genre kind of pushing like this narrative of being cool and be, you know, like I, I was listening to the the uh, interview you did the other day. He's talking about how like hip hop is cool. or whatever. I, th I think that was you. I don't know if it was, but yeah, I think it's very cool. I think it's very, very powerful for black people. I, I love it. I love mixing it in with my, my music. It's it's a it's a beautiful thing. I love hip hop so much, and um, I've been a hip hop. My bad. It definitely influences a lot of genres. Like as far as like ED, EDM and all that, like the mixing instrumentals, it definitely, definitely nowadays, definitely. It's going to continue. With them EDM mm -hmm. though, it takes it to a whole other level, huh? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Have you been to any like uh, festivals or concerts, seeing that kind of music live? Sadly not. I, I really want to, but it's just. I'm a, I'm a house person. I'm an introvert like crazy. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say yeah. after seeing, did you, I'm sure you've seen it, but like a lot of people have mixed emotions after the Astral World event, as far yeah. as going in and attending these concerts and festivals, does that make you second think that? Um, Not really. Cause I, cause it happens a lot. You know, there's like legendary festivals where people, there are like thousands of people and a couple people died in the, you know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. it happens. You know, it's, yeah. it's bound to happen when there's a whole bunch of people crammed into a space. So, nah, I would still go to one and, and have a lot of fun, to be honest. I ain't, I ain't even <laughs> yeah, I was I was really thinking about that. I'm like, people have died at these festivals. It's just, it hasn't been talked about. The Astro World one yeah. was global, so everyone had their eyes on it to see the reality of it, you know? Yeah, like nowadays, and, it's, and it's, it's, it's Travis Scott, you know what I mean? He got a lot of power in the social media, social media realm, so people are going to take advantage of that and kind of just make it something that is not i mean people died you know what i mean like rest in peace you know it's it's crazy but yeah the media takes it too far sometimes all the time <laughs> that's yeah the media is something it's like a, its own monster now with with fame how how famous do you want to get honestly 
I mean, I want to be an instant classic, you know what I mean? But I'm, I don't want to be famous. I don't want to be Michael Jackson type shit. I want to be known with my my fan base and they kind of they stick with me my whole life, my whole um, career as an artist. You know, what I, mean? I don't really want to be famous. I want to be. I want to be known as for what I'm known for. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to be famous. I feel that, bro, because like fame is a scary thing. Like, I'm not sure if you really deal with it right now, but what are your how do you handle situations when it comes to like negative comments or like hate? I ignore it. All right. Like, honestly, um, it happens a lot, though. Like, I'm not even <laughs> that big of an artist yet, but it happens a lot um, in, in my real life and on the comments and shit. It's fucking yeah. annoying, but, you know, it's, it happens. Yeah, I don't really give it no mind. Don't give it no energy. Yeah, what I learned is some people just hate because that's what they want to do. And you can't control it, man. The thing about haters is they hang around other haters. So they're going to be in a little group talking shit about, e about each other and talking shit about other people. And they're going to be sad because they don't have any friends. But <laughs> yeah, you know, dog. It don't make sense, man. But, you know, you end, up with, you, end up, you end up with who you end up with. You know, it's kind of your choice. And shit like that. That's really true. Now, with the music, bro. Talk about the the first time that you were really tapped into it. What year was that? How old were you? Um, when I start started music pr production, it was twenty fifteen. So like when I start, I, I played instruments my whole life. I played guitar. I started learning learning guitar in high school. Um, but uh, I learned how to learn how to play like brass instruments, like the trombone and shit, in middle school. But production and getting into music was 2015 i was just it was just my friend group like i was friends with a whole bunch of rappers and i was a producer so it was just like it was cool at first i would beatbox and shit and then it was like bro you need to get on you know and then i got a computer and i learned how to produce and it was fun i just never stopped literally I do that shit almost every day pretty much every day but like <laughs> nowadays that's, that's dope so was it all self-taught or did you do some like youtube in um i mean i'll even when you do look on YouTube, it's still self-taught, but definitely self-taught as far as like learning how to find my sound. Um, I was influenced by like Lil Peep and shit like that, you know, it's, um, like recently. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I taught myself. And nobody really taught me. Yo, that's badass. I like that. So when you do your um, your mixing, your mastering, that's all you. Yeah. Um. Honestly, if I'm being real, I need to. I need to work on my mix mixing and mastering but it's you know it's a process learning your whole uh mastering your your sound so yeah i need to work on that but would yeah. you would you consider yourself a music composer oh yeah definitely i feel like especially nowadays because i feel like i have a definite view of genres and music and how it works and the elements to it and you know just the, the beauty of music I, I love it so much it's crazy yeah, because when I was listening to your music, your music can really go in all different directions. Like, you can make music for uh, artists to put their vocals over, but you also can have music where it's just straight up vibes. You can put it in a movie. You can put it in a video game. What is your main direction, though, where you want your music to head? Definitely in movies and video games. I want to go in that direction, but, you know, I want to perform. And I want to do all avenues, but first I want to get to the... Um, the movies and commercials and shit like that. I'm really trying to focus on that at the moment. I want to make Damn. my own movie, bro. I, I've been talking to so many like uh, directors and shit, trying to get my, get a movie, but it's just people are so. I don't know, man. It's weird, but I'm, I'm gonna get it. I might just make my own. Fuck it. <laughs> oh damn! So you're also interested in uh, making films, then? Oh yeah, definitely. I love I love film more than anything. That's all I used to do when I was a kid: watch TV, watch movies. Um. So, yeah, I would definitely want to have my own TV show or, like, some shit. So. Yo, that's badass. Now, when you're talking about that, are you talking about just the music or are you talking about, like, screen playing, the whole, writing? The whole, thing, the whole thing. I love everything. Love it. Yeah, but that's dope. definitely music, though, of course, you know, but everything. Yeah, the music is the core, but I, I get that, that you would want to do all these other creations, especially if it's a passion of yours. What are, right. some, of the, some, what are some of your favorite movies or TV shows? Uh, my favorite movie of all time is Home Alone 2, definitely. Um, oh, I like yeah. Wally. I like Wally. I like anything Pixar, Disney. Like, they, they just like the how they kind of show off the world and like uh, this fantasy world. I like sci fi movies. I like Star Wars. Fucking. All like that good stuff. About this shit. <laughs> yeah. Do you have uh, Disney Plus? Yeah. 
Yo, got, the app's crazy, was, dog. Yeah, Disney Plus, Hulu, Netflix, all that shit, bro. I'm telling oh, you. That's yeah. tight. That's tight. So what are, okay, let's say you're in the vibe, you're making music. How does that, do you, do you set a movie in the background? What's your vibe? Which, oh, you mean like when I make music or just in general? When you make music, when you're in the, in a studio? Um, well, I don't have a studio at the moment. I usually set outside my computer and my speaker and just make music. Um, either that, and I have a guitar and a piano. So when I do that, I sit in the house and just vibe. I have like a movie on in the background. Not th something that I don't want to focus on. So I might just play like some comedy or some shit just to like, you know, for background noise. Um, with the lights dim low, I would like it to be quiet and shit. So yeah. That's dope. Now, what are, you did bring up that you did some, uh, you know how to do some instruments, like guitar. What is, what is your favorite though? Favorite instrument is guitar. I don't know what it, it is. It's, it feels good in your hands and it's just like, the way that you can express yourself through the the riffs and stuff, it just feels so good. I don't know, man. It's crazy. Um, let's say uh, you know you go on camping, you got the campfire. Are you the one that pull out the guitar, play some music? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Think about that though. Like, um, even though I was taught in high school, I don't like. It, it's weird. Like, I gotta be in the, in the zone to play the guitar. Like, I can't just like, okay, look, this is, you know what I mean. I gotta be yeah. in the zone, like in my type of type of feeling, and just kind of just. Tch, tch, tch. I don't know, man. Um, out of the seven days out of a week, how many of those days are you working on music? Every day. Like I said, I'm all, either every day or almost every day. Like I go to work, come home, work on music, sleep, wake up, go to work, music, sleep. Literally. It's just, it's not a, it, I don't even treat it like it's a, um, I don't treat it like a habit. It's just like, it's just, I love doing it. You know what I mean? It, it feels, it just fills my soul. <laughs> That's dope. Did you always know that the music was running through your veins, or did you did it hit you at a certain age? Honestly, it just recently hit me this uh, 2020. Hit me 2020. That's when I started to market myself too as a as an artist. Before that, I would just make music just to because, it, like I said, because it felt good and like as a release. But I would just make it. I wasn't really trying to blow up or nothing, you know. But 2020. 2020. Did the the pandemic have anything to do with that? Not really, but it kind of helped me get my my first fans because you know everybody was in the house and shit so i kind of had avenues but then people also took advantage of me because i um oh, signed up for this master class for like oh we can make you famous in a month or and then it they took like two hundred dollars out of my fucking account oh, i'm still in the same place yeah so it, yeah. you make mistakes you learn from move on you know yeah yeah for real that's good that you you learn from those mistakes those are lessons you know what i mean yeah. um for all the the people who are tapping into wanting to be a producer themselves, because every day someone wants to become a producer. That's just the reality of it. What are some what are some tips or advice you can give them? Don't try to force it. Don't try to force a sound. Don't try to force a genre. Don't try to force. Don't because for me it took like I say like re, like I said recently to like really find my sound and like how I sound. You know, so don't force anything. Just kind of learn the basics. Learn. BPM, learn, um, learn about scales, learn about all that shit, learn about how to tune shit, learn about instruments, learn, learn about the music, and it will just come to you. You know, songwriting is not, songwriting is different from like learning the instruments, you know? So, kind of, but. Awesome, you know, bro. That's good you advice know, for them. Do your thing, man. Just have fun with it, honestly. Don't take it too seriously. Now, how long did it take you to be like satisfied on releasing a song? into the public still not satisfied i feel like i should have more views but you know it takes time like, now with you bro I, this is an interesting question um you know you release a, you release a, your music and let's say an artist grabs that song the beat without even asking your permission does a song yeah, releases yeah. the song how do you how do you react i mean i like my music you know it's cool but if they if they start if they blow up off that shit, I gotta assume like fuck that. But you know, I, I ain't tripping though. Like I said, if they like it, they like it. But you know, it's cool. When you when you release your music, do you release it as just music, or like a like a song itself, or is it an instrumental? I release it as a song, um, just because I'm a producer. I don't really like have any vocal talents or like I can't do lyric, you know. So I release it as a song or an album. What are your thoughts on uh, the underground right now, this year? 
I don't know, man. It's kind of just the same as it was, you know. It's kind of like this emo trap, this death tra- metal trap type of type of vibe, kind of like from taking off from uh, Peep and X and all that shit. It's kind of the same. Um, now, as far as like lyrics and like underground, like hip hop, like lyrics wise, it's pretty cool. I like it. It's different. Um, but yeah, I don't really fuck with rap nowadays. It's kind of the same to me. I feel that. I feel that. What about your thoughts on the internet world and how are we getting closer to like virtual reality, creating oh, yeah. avatars? Shit, this, this is what I love right here. So look, I feel like probably in the next like five, five, ten years, we're going to have the the access to like different worlds. You know, you know about like Facebook metaverse and all that shit? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I feel like that's going to be the main main entertainment i don't feel like it's gonna be mainstream yet probably like 20 years when everybody's gonna be in it but like 10 years i feel like the crazy technology the crazy worlds the crazy people blowing up off of like different shit like 10 mm-hmm. years five years i'm gonna do some shit like that too just, just wait but you know yeah dog that's exciting i'm glad that you feel that way too because that's the that's where we headed bro yeah yeah i think it's a great thing i feel like for human beings we just like to you know adapt obviously but with all these robots and shit, I feel like we, we're going to make a world where everything's automated and we're just going to be like in our, in our shelter, in virtual worlds, thinking of new creative ideas and thinking of new avenues of where we can take um, society. Mm-hmm. That's what I think mm-hmm. we're going to be. brought up the movie WALL-E. Like, it's kind of yeah, like, like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. kind of just, yeah, everybody kind of just in their own shit. They don't even, yeah. Which could be bad and could be good at the same time. Well, I think it's like anything else. There's blessings and curses with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, what about AI? What are your thoughts on that? AI is awesome. I, actually, I use AI in some of my videos um, on TikTok and on Instagram. Um, I think it's amazing. I think the technology that we have currently is amazing. But the shit we're going to do in a couple of years is going to be even better, obviously. But like, I think it's amazing. I love it. I love the idea of like having this extra psyche type shit. You know what I mean? You don't even have to think about think about stuff. You know, you wake up in the morning, hey, we have everything ready for like this random, that shit is awesome. I love it. It's cool. Now, like, I'm sure you see it. There's bots everywhere. You got them on Instagram. You got them on Twitter. Every application, really. Do you feel like in about five, ten years that these bots will interact just like humans and remember everything? I, f- I give it like 20 years, but I f- it's creepy. But yeah, I feel like it's going to be like that. Like, it's just going to be because it's just there's currently like some uh, influencers that are just like AI. Like they're not people like, you know, like the whole shit is AI. So yeah. it's already happening. It's, 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 it's scary as shit, but it's like it's cool at the same time because you never know what it's going to it lead to. You know what I mean? That's it's true, like, dog. And shit. You, you never know what, what can happen. I forgot the the name of this. Uh, artificial intelligence singer. She's from Japan. She's an anime, an anime singer. All AI, bro. And people go yeah. to the concerts to watch her. You can even pay for a verse. Um, do you feel like you'll eventually get to that position? Oh yeah. Like when I say I want to create something new, like with nostalgia wave, I don't just mean like on some artist shit, like on some simple. I'm gonna perform and do this. I mean, I'm gonna change the world with technology. Like I want to have a platform. I want to create a platform where technology fashion and and music kind of combine as one thing and you just kind of experience life through that that medium you know what i mean whoa yeah so that's what you really mean yeah that's what i really mean but it's it's the starting stages you know what i mean so i can i can only do what i got deal with what i got like this that's true these are like the the beginning stages and that's cool that you're ahead of the curve because now a lot of people are really tapped into what the future holds as far as like the metaverse and being a part of the internet so you doing that because i'm doing the same thing like what are your thoughts on like nfts i'm trying to get my foot in the door yesterday i actually set up um there's like this this crew that does like documentaries on nfts and like future things they don't have that many people like doing it so you know i was sign up for it if i you know yeah. they doing documentaries on people i was, uh send them my email i just got away from me back but i want to definitely get involved like i want to get fan. that's why i want to get my fan base yeah, Cause, you know, everybody doesn't everybody doesn't know about that shit. You know what I mean? So you can't really do anything with it if don't, nobody knows about it. You gotta that's find what, people. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you you're so far, I mean, ahead of the curve, like you could potentially be one of the first 
big mainstream music producers in that world, bro. Yeah, I would love to, but take uh, you know, time, time will tell. Time, time will tell. tell. That's facts, dog. What about uh, are you into cryptocurrency? I put a couple. I put a couple cents into to Bitcoin because I I don't know about too much about it, but you know, I, I put a couple cents into it and I kind of watch it fluctuate just to understand it. But. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's all tied in like crypto, NFTs, yeah, yeah, the the metal blockchain, blockchain, and all that. Blockchain. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, and and it's to the normal person, bro. They're gonna be like, that's too much, and not want to be a part of it because it seems kind of like difficult you know what i mean kind of the words are yeah. like kind of difficult and, and it is it is hard to understand like i don't even understand it fully you know what i mean but that's why you kind of gotta research it every day and understand it until you can yeah so they can can make results out of it but people are making money off of nfts and shit already i, I want to be you know i want to do it but I, I don't know what to do man i don't you just got to do your research, take, like you said, take it a day at a time. Because I remember, bro, when Bitcoin was like $100, bro. Yeah, some crazy shit. Uh, I, I don't know, man. Yeah, you, it's, a crazy, you, uh, it's a crazy time we're living in. What were we saying? For sure. You uh, you invested in NFTs yet? Um, Unfortunately, where my cryptocurrency is at is Robinhood. Have you heard of Robinhood? Yeah, that's what I used to. Oh, dope, man, dope. So with Robinhood, I don't know if you know, like you don't have a wallet yet as far as doing transfers on your cryptocurrency. And because that option is not available yet, I can't create an NFT. Mm -hmm. Once yeah. the wallet is available, I'm on, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the waiting list right now, but once that's public and available, then I could uh, transfer my crypto to create an NFT. Maybe I could uphill radio NFT, then I could yeah. have it presented and sell it. But I can't do none of that until Robinhood allows us to have our wallets. So you got you got. I know you inter interviewing me, but you got Robinhood. You uh, invest in stocks and shit like that. I actually sold all my stocks because I wasn't making. It's like a long game when it comes to stocks. Yeah, yeah. But with crypto, it's much more faster. So all my money's in crypto. So I have Bitcoin, I have Ethereum, and then uh, Dogecoin. Yeah. You invest in any uh, businesses? I know you said you sold all of them, but with, well, like what business did you uh, invest in? I did a uh, Nintendo, which I got some money from, um, Roblox, Tesla, um, Blue Origin. But with Blue Origin, I lost money on that one. I, I lost some money on that one. But um, like, like those ones, because that's, that's where the money's at, especially with Nintendo, because in Japan, they have the Nintendo Land. I don't know if you know about that. No, I didn't know about that. See, the thing, if I could uh, give any advice for anyone who's watching, even yourself, like, if you're going to put money in stocks, make sure you research the business and the decisions that they make, not just right now, but in the future, because that's going to determine how much yeah. money you get. That's kind of the whole point, you know what I mean? Like, kind of understanding the business and wanting to be a part of that. You know what yes. I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I agree with you. It, it definitely is a business. Like, if you're going to put your money in it, you can't yeah. just, like... You really gotta focus. You know, about, uh, Warren, Buffett. Warren Buffett. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> Shit is crazy, man. Like gems, dog gems. <sighs> I'm trying to That's be a, a billionaire, man. <laughs> hey, and you know what? It's so trippy. Is like it's not impossible to be a billionaire, bro. Like, what are your thoughts on like Kanye West? Kanye West, I think he's very creative. He he inspires me a lot, actually. You know, producer turned rapper. He he's crazy, but um. I don't think he's crazy, but I think he's crazy as a as an artist and what he's done, you know, and what he's still doing. For real, people bro. say he's insane, though, know, but you know, you gotta have a little bit of ins insanity if you're a genius type shit. Right. So, you know, you have to, you have to, bro. Like, um, I guess there's like a stigma on insanity, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Because, like. Yeah. You don't want to deal with a, a serial killer type shit. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So I, <laughs> you know what I mean? So. <laughs> yeah, that's true, dog. That's true, huh? You got, yeah. You got to be careful because words are powerful, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. To have the thought and then to say it out loud and execute it, like, that's insane. Yeah, for sure. And, I, and a lot of people just be saying shit and they don't really have an intention or they don't have the research or they don't have the, the passion mm -hmm. to actually see it through they just kind of say it because everybody else is saying it and that's an image and that's what they wanted but they never achieve it and that's why you see these people old as fuck hating that's what I mean. <laughs> you know what i mean um, bitter like straight up bitter bitter shit. um what is your most 
Like, where do you get the most success as far as your music on applications? What's the main app? Def, well, I want to say TikTok, but at the same time, it's Instagram is both of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mainly Instagram because I reach out. I'm good. Right now. Thank you. Um, mainly Instagram because I reach out to a lot of influencers and a lot of people to, to connect with. And then I do a lot of edits there. But TikTok because I send people to TikTok and because it's just like, you know, you see what you like, you like it, you follow, shit like that. Yo, I'm, I would say it the same way. Like, my main uh, audience is on Instagram, but I'm also learning a lot about TikTok because before I would just ignore TikTok because of the stigma behind it. But now I know what it could bring, bro. It could bring you a whole total new fan base. That's the shit, then- too. Like, it's, it's crazy. I, I just don't, like, I don't understand it, though. Like, I don't understand it. Wanna- you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's cool, though. It do give me a couple views, but it's just like, I don't know. It's Dude. Cool. I'm right there with you. Like, I don't understand it. I don't understand the algorithm, bro. Yeah, yeah. Instagram is easier to understand. You reach out to people, you know, you get followers. But TikTok, yeah. you do the most trendiest thing to get zero views and you can do some bullshit and get like 3,000. It's, it's crazy. But yeah, that's, in- that's trippy. And then, so how long have you had your TikTok? Probably for like, yeah, since 2020, like two years, like a year or two. So, like, Tell me if you agree, like, it gives me almost just, like, two topics just because of the videos I like. It doesn't even, like, give me other information, like, other videos. It's just, like, yes. what you mean? Like if I'm into, Which, like, NFT videos, all I see is NFT shit or cryptocurrency. Is that happening? Yeah, yeah, I don't think that's a bad, you know, I see a, produ- a lot of producers and shit like that. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's, like, I think it's, I think that's the algorithm, you know what I mean? It's kind of, like, putting people in the groups type shit. Right, um, right. Yeah, so right. I... I but it's it's still kind of hard to maneuver through that at the same time though. But I I think it's cool. Whoa, bro, that's crazy! I never thought about that. You said it perfect. Like it's like grouping, like putting people in groups. Yeah, because you don't really see other shit that you don't fuck with. Like you said, like you don't see shit yeah. that you don't fuck with. unless yeah, you dog. unless you've been on there for like hours or some shit. You see some random ass shit, but you know. Bro, I'll be on TikTok just looking at videos, learning information and, you know, entertainment. And, bro, like, four hours pass, dog. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, for real. I don't know what it is. Like, it's just, it's so it's so addictive, man. Like, hell of addictive. Sure. It is, bro. It is. <laughs> um, do, you, do you feel like there's going to be another big app? Or you think that's it until, like, we enter the metaverse? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question, actually. I feel like it, I feel like there could be because I feel like the, the metaverse is like right here, but I don't. I think it's too early to like have things that will catch on. So mm-hmm. like unless you, unless you know about it, you're not gonna know about it. So I think that that might be another app. But at the same time, TikTok is a is a pretty big app. So I mean, <laughs> it is dog. I don't know. I don't know, man. Maybe. Yeah, because I would say after they made the the length of the videos longer on TikTok, that was like a key element to blow yeah. them up even more. That was a good, that was a good idea. Uh, to, yeah, it's a great idea. Yeah, the way that they have the whole thing set up is great. Like they, they're just creative. I would say it's kind of like the the new YouTube in a way. Kind of, but well, I see what you mean. For like younger people, yeah, it kind of is because YouTube used to be the shit. Like ah, uh, like when the first thing happened, just like a weird like space. It was cool. I think I think it's like that for younger people for sure. Because when you have YouTube, you know you have all of these videos but with tiktok the videos already play bro like they're already starting like you don't even gotta click on it <laughs> you don't got like no intros you don't get yeah that's true yes it's like a yeah like a faster kind of kind of yeah yeah to the point yeah for sure do you think that it's kind of messing up the, the youth um not really I, I think it's like like you said like both kind of both set two sides to every story Mm-hmm. I think it's a good thing because it brings people together and, you know, all these trends and shit. There, there could be big movements just from an app. You know what I mean? Like, there could be people, a whole millions of people saying this shit just because of an app. Um, but at the same time, it is kind of instant gratification. And if somebody hits some bullshit, somebody might believe it and follow that and, you know, false information, shit like that. So it's two sides to it. But I think it's great. Like, I think it's cool. I think it's great right. to for the community. It's a trip, bro, because, like, how we go on TikTok and Instagram, like the older folks, like our parents and before them, like the news was their social media. Yeah. You know shit what I'm saying? Is, like shit is always evolving, man. Like 
And we're in that, we're in that, um, we're in the age range where it's like the next shit that happens, it's our turn to take over. You know what I mean? So it's like, you gotta make, and we already ahead of a curve. So, you know, you gotta make that shit happen, man. Make For happen. real. Damn, dog. That's crazy. <laughs> now, now, do you get to, uh, with the applications that you have, um, music platforms, do you get to see where uh, the majority of your fans are at throughout the world? Yeah, yeah. Um, most of my fans are in America and in, in Mexico for some reason. I don't know. I don't know about Mexico, but <laughs> <laughs> yo, that's tight. Dang, you got people in the the border going crazy. Yeah, I mean, I got people in like random ass places across the seas. I can't think of it right now, but random ass places. Um, not too many though. I need somewhere, somewhere, somewhere international listeners. Honestly. Yo, to you, for you to be in the state that you're in, in the States, and have people in Mexico, like, bang your music, dog, like, how does that make you feel? It feels awesome, because that's the end goal. Like, just to have the whole world vibing and healing at the same time, and just, you know, uh, that's, that's the goal, man. Yeah, yeah, healing. We need the healing, bro. The music's gonna do that, for sure. Yeah, man. Damn, dog, that's so true. Like, what are your thoughts on, like, uh, our country? I think America is a great place, you know, land of opportunity. Definitely. It's definitely the, I'm glad I was born here. You know, I don't have to come across it just to like build my way up. You know, it, it was great, but like it's racist, definitely racist. It's fucking, it's, it's ignorant as far as like who gets like, you, you heard about that dude who like shoot, the shooter who like got set free. He was innocent. I, I don't know his name, but it's like some, some yeah, yeah. That shit is dumb. He he obviously had a gun in his hand on the pictures and all that shit, and they still let up. It's it's dumb, you know. Yeah, yeah. But but do you see how like the media just wants to stir up everybody? Definitely. I feel like that's everywhere in the world though. But in America, it's definitely more like the media controls the the majority of people. Mm, damn. Yeah, because I agree with you. Like, I'm happy and grateful that I was born here. Yeah. Um, but in the, you know, I studied the world, bro, and at the end of the day, we're like the circus. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like we have so much, so it's like a mixed pot, mm -hmm. uh, a mixed pot of opportunities. Like you never know who you can meet. You never know what avenue can can lead you where. You know, it's it's crazy for sure. And how big are you on like manifesting like your world? That's all I do is manifest my world. Even when somebody's telling me this, oh, you can't do it. Oh, you, oh it's going to be impossible. Fuck all that. I, I'm only in my world. You know, I was born in my world. I'm going to die in my world. So I'm not saying that in like an arrogant way, but like you, you only have one perspective in life and that's the one that you were born with. So I kind of mm. set my visions and set what I, what, what I want to see and make that shit happen. You know, it, and shit does happen. You know, it might be on a small scale for now, but like shit adds up. So. Damn, dog, that's perfect. You said it perfect. Now, what about, are you in the process of building your team or are you not there yet? Um, Kind of in the process, but at the same time, I'm, it's like I'm building like a business type team at the moment. I want to build my business first, have my foundation, then have my musical friends and shit like that. Because I try to have my friends first, but they weren't on the same page. They like yeah. to slack off and... Yeah fuck that i'm doing my thing building my business and then people come to me type shit or i find Damn. them i search for them uh -huh. yeah at the, moment, I'm looking, at the moment i'm um trying to get in contact with this artist who does like ai paintings his name's like rafiq abdul or something like that he does like these crazy paint these crazy it's crazy art where he has like giant screens like or like he projects it on like a, a building or some shit and it just plays like random images from like AI and it's so beautiful. Like I would love to incorporate that with my music. It's crazy. That's the move right there. Damn, bro. Yeah, that's the move right there. I like the way you think, bro. Your imagination is wild. Dog. I like that. Thank you. But what uh with the with the year coming to an end, what are your thoughts on your growth as an artist? Um, as an artist, 2021 was definitely my greatest year from for growth as far as uh getting my community. I was so 2021 is where I focused down on like who do I want to listen to my music. Mm. Last year was like okay, what do I want to do? This year was like who do I want to target? Mm. Type shit. That's, that's, that's kind of. That's I feel beautiful. great. I, I felt like I could have done better, but you know it's it's the year still here, so I, you know I ain't giving up yet. 
That's true, dog. That's true. Do you have any uh, set goals in place for 2022? I wanna, I wanna, I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna drop an album uh, next year, definitely. I wanna perform my first show next year. Mm. I wanna try to be on a commercial or something, like something. If I try hey. to my next year, man. I Got see to. it. I see it, dog. It'll happen, bro. It'll Got to happen. Got to. Um, for all the viewers that are new to you, what are some of the songs that you start off with? Shit, you mind if I play it? Yes, sir. <laughs> Cause Let's get um, it. to explain me as an artist, I'm more of like a wavy vibe, chill, sit back, relax, mental health, growth, um, type of person, spiritual, definitely spiritual. Um, so yeah, just sit back and relax. This song is called frequency of love. It's off my album that came out this year. I dropped three albums this year. Well, actually my EP that came out this year, I dropped two albums and EP. Okay. Um, the EP is called To Fill the Void. And Void. this is the first song on the album. So. All right. Good vibe. <laughs> since we talked. Sorry about that. But well, maybe if you don't want to talk, you could just listen. <laughs> Sorry about all the pink in the room, man. I'm in my, my sister's room at the moment. Hey, no worries, brother. That was a vibe. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. I love oh, that song. God. No point intended. <laughs> Wait, what's that song called again? Uh, Frequency of Love. Frequency of Love, man. Beautiful. And that's available on all music platforms. Uh no, nah, it's just on SoundCloud at the moment. That's actually, I'm glad you said that. I'm gonna release that shit on, on everything. Um, but it's sampled by Flyleaf, which is one of my favorite bands besides Whoa. Paramore. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. bro. <laughs> nice name drop. I forgot about that band. Yes, they're crazy. Oh damn, Flyleaf! <laughs> You're gonna make me listen to their music tonight, bro. I forgot yeah, about they're that. They're crazy. They're crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's dope, bro. Yeah. Did you want to play another one? Shit, if you got time, hell yeah. This yes, one sir. is an introduction too. It's called Nostalgic Numb. This song was actually the, the song that got me the game of the idea to make Nostalgia Wave. I made this shit last mm -hmm. year. And it's just supposed to be nostalgic, I guess. I don't know. Awesome. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's get this <laughs> Thank you. 
I like your style, bro. I like it so much, dog. Thank you, GG, thank you. bro. <laughs> I just I just can't get it, dude. Like you have you definitely have your own style. Mm -hmm. Do you have um I kind of yeah. the the inspiration from for nostalgia wave and what it's supposed to like symbolize and sound like and how you're supposed to feel, it's kind of like a positive uh PTSD. I actually did some research and, um, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, you know what I mean? There's actually a positive side to that. This thing called uh, post-traumatic post growth, which is like you actually get strong from the, uh, you know, from the, from the trauma. You know, instead of breaking mm -hmm. down, you actually get strong as a person and you feel like you can t overtake other obstacles. So I kind of made it off that, but like a musical version. That actually, you can actually feel, you know what I mean? So... And I don't know if it's a placebo type thing, but like I feel like if I can make a musical, if I can make something that you can vibe with and you have that mindset and that mentality that you can get over anything, people will get over anything. You know what I mean? Even that's 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 kind of the inspiration for it, man. That's kind of the direction I want to take it. And, and I like that. that stages. My bad. I was gonna no, you're good. I was gonna say no one's talking like that either, bro. Like for you to mm -hmm. say that, like. PTG pretty much, right? PTG, the growth. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, pretty much. dog, for you to even take that kind of like, maybe it's not the right word, but like responsibility for you to do that, to even care for others, to make music with, for healing. Like, dude, bro, yeah. good stuff, dog. Because it definitely came from a place of, for me, you know what I mean? It came from a place of loneliness, a place of hurt, a place of, you know what I mean? A place of feeling like I didn't have anybody to talk to. Even when I did, like my exes and shit, like I don't want to talk about them. My my exes, <laughs> like relationships, that's who them. They were who I would vent to, but they were also broke themselves. You know, they mm. sit at the gym with every kid, so like they have PTSD. They had PTSD, but like hearing their story mm -hmm. really got me in the mindset. Like, whoa, people are really fucked up. Like, <laughs> and people For really need up. help. And it's like, yeah, I would love to to be the person to to lead the the next generation of people. Bro, beautiful dog. That's actually let's leave it at that beautiful note, bro. That was awesome. Um, it was a pleasure having you here. And to oh, be yeah, honest, it, I was gonna say it's so good. We gotta get a second one in. I am um, I might even, man. I'm down. Most definitely, dog. I appreciate you for even doing the music segment, for doing this podcast. I appreciate you as an artist. I learned a lot. Um, for all the viewers that are new to you, where can they find all your music? Uh hit me up on Instagram, uh, Y2K uh, Zona Melodic Y2K. SoundCloud is on our melodic YouTube uh, nostalgia wave. I'm on every platform. I'm on every avenue. I'm on Discord. I'm on fucking Twitch. I'm, I'm on everything, man. I'm trying to get known. I'm trying to get a voice mm -hmm. out there. Definitely. All in due time. For sure, man. It's not it's melodic. Cool. Yeah, man. Nostalgia <laughs> wave, brother. Thank you so much, dog. I appreciate you, bro. Peace. Have a good day. <laughs>